Welcome to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the last class we have seen the zero sum games, matrix games in particular and we also have introduced the mixed strategies. Today our goal is to establish this min-max theorem. First we start with a general setup and then we specialize to finite games or matrix games. So let us start with the simple setup. So we consider two players, the player 1 strategy space is S1, player 2 strategy space is S2 and the payoff function is F from S1 cross S2 to R. So, recall pay off to player 1 is Fxy and pay off to player 2 is minus Fxy. Of course, x is a strategy chosen by player 1 y is a strategy chosen by player 2. Now as, uh, once again we recall equilibrium saddle point equilibrium is defined as a pair x star y star they belong to S1 cross S2 satisfying the following thing F X star Y star when Y star is fixed by player 2 X star maximizes player 1's payoff and when X star is fixed by player 1 Y star minimizes the same function. This is true for all x in S1, y in S2. Okay, as I said, we need some assumptions. We assume S1 is compact and convex. Similarly, S2 is compact and convex. F is concave in x variable when y is fixed. Similarly, F is convex in Y variable when X is fixed. So, these are the assumptions required to prove our existence of a saddle point equilibrium. So, let me state the theorem. let S1 and S2 be compact and convex subsets of some Euclidean space. F is concave convex function. What I mean by concave convex is that in the first variable x variable f is a concave function in y variable f is convex. Then saddle point equilibrium exists. This is the theorem. So, we will try to prove this. 
the proof is not very hard, but we require some play with the convexity and all. So, first to start with we assume f dot y as a function of x is strict concave and f as a function of y variable is strict convex. So, the advantage of the strict concave or strict convexity is that the function will admit a unique minimizer or maximizer according to it is convex or con strict convex or strict concave. So, uh, let us say what the strict convexity means is that f x lambda y plus 1 minus lambda y prime is less than or equal to lambda f x y plus 1 minus lambda f x y prime this is the convexity. In the strict convex case this is replaced by a strict inequality. So, that is the strict convex and a strict concavity is defined analogously. So, the first thing we would like to say is that the first fact under strict convexity the minimizer is unique. Of course, if I take concavity then this minimizer becomes maximizer. So, the proof is not hard. So, let us say if y y prime are two minimizers, this implies f okay, instead of writing f and all let me put it as a function g of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda y prime this is going to be strictly less than lambda g y plus 1 minus lambda g y prime this is strictly less than minimum of g. Of course, this is equals to this and therefore, g of lambda y plus 1 minus lambda y prime is strictly less than minimum of g which is a contradiction. Therefore, y has to be same as y prime and hence uniqueness. The uniqueness automatically follows. Okay. Once we have uniqueness, now let us start working out the details. Now, for each x in S1, f x dot has a unique minimizer. Therefore, let this be. y which depends on x. What it means is that f of x comma y x is nothing but minimum y in S2 of f x y. So, let me I define this by m x. Now, f is a uniformly continuous function. Okay. 
on S1 cross S2. Basically S1, S2 are compact sets and hence any continuous function on a compact set is uniformly continuous. So that is the reason why f is going to be a uniformly continuous function. Now this uniformly continuity implies that as a consequence of this is that m x is continuous function. So this follows from the uniform continuity. So the argument is that if x and x prime are sufficiently close f x prime y and f x y are also sufficiently close by irrespective of y that comes from the uniform continuity and hence you can show that these are all this m x is a continuous function I will leave this as an exercise. It is a real analysis exercise. Okay. Next thing I would like to say is that m x is a is concave function. Why is this? So, recall m x is nothing but minimum over y of f x comma y. For each fixed y f x y is a concave function and then you are looking at the minimum of them. So, minimum of the concave functions. So, this is a concave function. This follows because m x is point wise minimum of concave functions therefore m x is a concave function. This implies m x has a maximizer. Let this be x star in which is in S1. So, x star is in S1. This existence of x star happens because S1 is a compact set and m is a continuous function on S1. So, let this be x star. Now, what we have is that m x star is nothing but max over x of m x which is same as max over x min over y of f x y. Now, we will show that x star y x star is a saddle point equilibrium. Okay. So, let us look at the following thing. First thing is that m x star which is same as f x star y x star. So, recall y x star is the minimizer of this function f. So, therefore, this is less than or equal to f x star y for all y in S2. So, one inequality in some sense follows here. Okay. So, this is one inequality that we want when x star is fixed y x star minimizes. So, now we need to look at the other way inequality. So, let us look at that f x star y x star this is nothing but our m x star which is certainly bigger than m x for all x in S1. Now, let y tilde 
to be y into 1 minus t x star not plus t x basically it is not y into it is a y of 1 minus t x star plus t x for some t in 0 1. Pick basically we are taking a, a nearby point around x star ok in the direction of x. So, look at that what is m of 1 minus t x star plus t x. This is nothing but f of 1 minus t x star plus t x star comma y tilde and now f is concavity is there. So, therefore, this is nothing but 1 minus t f x star plus t f x y tilde. So, now what we have got here is the following thing m x star is certainly bigger than m of 1 minus t x star plus t x this is coming from the maximality of x star this is greater than or equal to 1 minus t f x star y tilde plus t f x y tilde that is just proved that fact and um, this is greater than or equals to 1 minus t m x star this is coming f x star y tilde is bigger than or equals to m x star that is because of this fact. Note that m x star is always less than or equals to f x star y for all y in S2. This immediately tells me that f x star y tilde is certainly a bigger quantity than m x star. So, that is exactly what we have used here. This plus T f x y tilde. Now, what we have here let me write down here is that m x star greater than equals to 1 minus t m x star plus t f x y tilde. This immediately implies that m x star is greater than equals to f x y tilde recall this y tilde is nothing but 1 minus t x star plus t x of this is basically y of the best response corresponding to 1 minus t x star t x and we have already seen that these are all continuous functions. Now, let t goes to 0. This immediately implies m x star is going to be bigger than or equals to f of x as t goes to 0 this becomes 1 this becomes 0 therefore, this is y of x star. Now, combining all these inequalities what we have is that f x y x star this is less than or equals to m x star m x star is nothing but f x star y x star which is less than or equals to f x star y this is true for every x and y. Now, this proves
that x star y star y x star is a saddle point equilibrium. So, this is a one very simple proof here in this proof we have used the fact that these functions are all convex they are continuous functions on a compact set and hence uniform continuity and we have used this thing. Now so far we have used we have assumed that that f is strict concave and strict concave convex in the appropriate variables. Now, what if they are not strict? If they are not strict, then we make a perturbation here. So, for example, we consider epsilon xy to be fxy plus epsilon mod x square plus epsilon mod y square ok. We need to take here minus to make it concave and here it is plus. Now, this becomes strict concave strict convex function. Now, there is a saddle point equilibrium for the game f epsilon s1 s2. So, let this be x epsilon y epsilon. Therefore, f epsilon x epsilon y epsilon ok. Let me erase this x y epsilon this is less than or equal to f epsilon x epsilon y epsilon which is less than or equal to f epsilon x epsilon y for all x comma y in S1 cross S2. Now the that the sequence x epsilon y epsilon has a convergent subsequence in S1 cross S2. So, this extracting this convergent subsequence follows from the Boljana Wittstrass property or S1 cross S2 are compact and hence this happens. Now, let x epsilon y epsilon converges to x star y star along some subsequence. Now, along this subsequence we let epsilon going to 0 in the equation star let me call this as star. So, if I let epsilon goes to 0 we need to show that this converges to f x y star, this converges to f x star y star, this converges to f x star y. This follows directly from this one f epsilon x y as epsilon goes to 0 this term and this term go to 0 and hence this follows. So, we get f x y star which is less than or equal to f x star y star which is less than or equal to f x for all x y in S1 cross S2. This proves the theorem. So, what we have proved here is let us recall the statement mm. 
if S1 and S2 are compact and convex subsets of some Euclidean space and F is a concave convex function then the saddle point equilibrium exists. Let us recall what we have proved. Under the assumption that S1 and S2 are compact and convex subsets and F is a concave convex function we showed that a saddle point equilibrium exists. Now there are few points in this proof. Did we really use the Euclidean space structure here? The answer to this is no because we only use the fact that they are compact and convex. So the extraction of all these things we only have used that under because these sequences are all from a compact set. So they will have a convergent subsequence this follows because of by the compactness. So therefore this proof even though we stated it for uh, Euclidean space it goes beyond the Euclidean space. So in that sense this is this theorem is valid even in an infinite dimensions as long as S1 and S2 are compact and convex sets. And even that uniform continuity does not depend on R and as such it depends only on the compactness. Any continuous function on a compact subset is a uniformly continuous. So therefore this theorem is valid even in infinite dimension. For a matrix game if A is our matrix game or pi is the payoff function this is the mixed extension then this pi is now a payoff function from the mixed strategies of player 1 cross mixed strategies of player 2 to r and note that this pi is a bilinear function also delta 1 delta 2 these are all compact convex sets. Therefore, mixed equilibrium exists. So, this is basically the von Neumann min max theorem. So, of course, von Neumann's proof does not depend on that infinite dimensional structure, he has explicitly solved it for the matrix game case. So what we will do in the next session is to give a proof which works with matrix games and then we derive several other interesting consequences. We stop this session here and we will come back in the next session. Good day.